Well, hello guys, and welcome back. It's been a while since uh, we've seen you, or you've seen me, but uh, uh, this is a video that I've put off, I think, long enough, and now that it's actually possible for me to do so, I'm glad to bring you this video. There's other videos out there, and it's actually been able to be done for a little while, and that is a PlayStation 4 jailbreak. And so it's been, a, you know, um, I wanted to do one sooner, but when I got this console, it was on version 10.1 uh, or 10.01. So unfortunately, it was already past version 9.0. So, but we're going to go do that now. We're going to walk you through all this, show you what we need to do. Obviously, we're going to need to get a few things off the pewter here. So I'm just going to show you the PlayStation here. Let's just show you what what's going on on the PlayStation. So, as you can see, uh, there's no there's no golden hand or anything else installed here on yet. But I'm going to go to system settings, and in this through this video, I'm going to use the um, version 11 jailbreak and that you can do it anything from 9 all up to 11 but in this for this sake of this video we're gonna go straight to version 11 so let's go on down here to the system and system information here you are you see i'm on system software version 11.00 now if you are not on version 11.00 and you want to follow along with this video, we're going to need a couple of things. So first off, we'll need the official firmware list. So let's get the our list of files that will be required for this entire jailbreak downloaded. So this there links will be in the description. But in this case, we have the retail firmware. So we're going to scroll down until we see version 11. We can download that. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that. Also, we're going to need to download Golden Hen from their GitHub page. The latest release of, at the time of this video is version 2.4 beta 17.3. You just scroll down and you'll see it under assets. We're going to download that. You'll need 7-zip to extract these. Next, we'll need the software for the computer. This is PPPWN GUI version 1.9. I uh, will also include the links to version 1.5 in the video description. So in case one works better than the other for you, your results may vary. Last thing, we're gonna go ahead and download up here at the top, the homebrew store, download for PlayStation 4. We're gonna download that. And now we just need to get our SD card ready. So let's go ahead and take you over there or not our SD card, sorry, our USB device. Now, it doesn't matter uh, the size or anything else, but when you look here, look at properties, your USB drive will need to be fa formatted XFAT or FAT32. So if we are updating your PlayStation to version 11, you'll need to create a couple folders. First folder at the root is PS4 in capital letters. Inside there, you will need to create another folder, update all capital letters again. And then the file that you download for the version 11 firmware, you may have to rename that file. I mean, it needs to be called ps4update.pup. You put that folder in the update folder, plug it into your system, go to system, system update, from flash drive, all that good stuff. You're done, all right? So once your console is on version 11, here's that. We're gonna have to set up a couple of things. Obviously, we don't wanna accidentally connect to the internet and um, accidentally update past that. So we're gonna set up their network settings for the exploit, we're gonna make sure that internet, connected internet is unchecked for the time being. We're gonna set up an internet connection. Oh, sorry, we have to click connect to internet. Then we're gonna set up internet connection. We're gonna choose use a LAN cable. We're gonna go to custom, 
we're going to select P P P O E. And for the password, you can just put P P P and then the password P P P and then click next automatic DNS automatic MTU and do not use proxy server. And that's it. We can go and click back. We'll try to test the internet connection. Now you'll, will connect a network cable from your console to your PC in an available, um, in an available ethernet port. If you have one on your computer, that way the console can connect to the internet, get an IP address, all that kind of good stuff. Now there might be some other things you have to do and we'll try to see if that issue arises, but you'll connect the network cable from your PlayStation to an available ethernet port on your computer. Um, we'll need to make sure that the console can actually obtain an IP address. We'll open up your network connections. In this case, I'm using Wi-Fi, and the current network adapter I'm using to connect to the PlayStation is called Ethernet. So I'm gonna right click on whatever the internet connection I'm using, if it's another Ethernet cable or another Wi-Fi connection, whatever. You can choose properties and go to sharing and allow and set it up, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Done deal. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go back to our, our uh, USB drive here. So the files you will need on your USB drive is the golden hen bin, which we downloaded and extracted earlier. And then you, I, I got any games, any games you want to install on your console after the fact, you can put them on the root of your USB drive. I got the Apollo save manager here, the cheat manager and item flow and the homebrew store also on my USB drive, ready to be plugged into the PlayStation. So let's go ahead and take our USB drive out because these are bigger. It can't plug into the front port. So I got to plug with mine in the back. So let me do this real quick here. So our USB drive is plugged in. So now we have to run this software right here. This is the PPPWN loader. So we're gonna drag and drop our stage two file in here since we're using the version 11 as the one we're gonna use. And then we're just gonna make sure this is configured to the correct ethernet adapter and the version of the PlayStation software that we're using. We're gonna run the exploit and this is gonna run it's going to keep running. We're going to go ahead and test the internet connection again. <laughs> Hopefully it'll work this time. <laughs> test the internet connection. And this will take, this could take multiple attempts for it to officially successfully load. So you might have to run the exploit several times in order for it to get to work. So. Now, in order for this to work, you do need to be able to obtain an IP address. All right, I had to restart the sharing process for the internet. So now you see this time I got a successful uh, IP address. So right now it's trying to scan for the corrupt objects. It's gonna keep trying. You see it says cannot connect to the network. And it's going to try the heap grooming again. And this could take two, three, four, or five attempts at a successful uh, exploit. If it gets past stage two, you're good. And this is where, see, the scan corrupt objects failed. So it's going to try it again. It's going to restart it again. And this process will keep repeating itself over and over again until it's successful. So you'll just have to be patient while this runs. Um, yeah. It's 
failed. Now, mine took several times, and I have a PS4 Pro. So mine ran through this, I think, five or six times before it was finally successful. Needless to say, during this process, I was starting to get a little bit discouraged that the PS4 wasn't compatible with this exploit. But I just kind of, oh, there it goes. Stage three triggered. And you'll get a notification on your PlayStation 4 that it's ran the exploit. Can't connect to the network. PPP WNED payload successfully transferred to the internal hard drive. That is where it's copying the golden hen. Golden hen is loaded. The exploit is successful. So now we can back out of this internet connection. Now, now that the exploit is running in the background, let me go switch screens here. Um, you don't have to worry about the exploit like going away or anything so it, as long as it's right here and you can put your console into like sleep mode or whatever and it won't it'll keep it loaded but if you fully shut down or unplug your console you'll have to go back to the whole exploit process so um i guess i can turn off the internet but we'll take a look at that in a second here so so golden hand, so debug settings, this is where your package installer is. Now this is a little bit different from the way PlayStation 3 was because the package installer was right there under the game menu. So I, I was a little confused when I was looking for the package installer because it's actually under the debug settings. So we go to package installer. Right now the source is currently set to the USB drive. So we're gonna go ahead and install all of these because, you know, why not? And we're going to let this install, and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So now all of our package were installed. So let's go and back out. We'll go to the XMB. <clears throat> and so there's, there's all our homebrew that's been installed. And so, and everything works. All right. So if you want to reconfigure your internet, that will allow you to connect to the internet. You don't have to worry about it automatically installing updates or anything like that. As long as Golden Hen up here is up here, you don't have to worry about it. So I'm not going to show you the homebrew store, but item flow is kind of like another XMB. It just kind of gives you another way of looking at your library, which is kind of neat. And I think it has other features too. I haven't really dove into that. If we want to explore more about it, we can do that later. So we'll download covers later since we're not currently connected to the internet, but but yeah, there's the, uh, so it, it's kind of a neat uh, alternative to the XMB home screen. So um, all these other games are games that I, all these games I own, but these ones aren't package files. So I don't need to put the disc in to play those. So, but we're not here to check that out. So let's go ahead and exit here. And just to show that everything works, core should load right up as well. Takes a little while, doesn't it? Start. Skip through all that. There we are. Legend of Korra. All good to go. Yeah, so that's been a long time overdue. They finally got a PlayStation 4 taken care of. <laughs> now, obviously, not everyone's going to have a computer with an extra Ethernet port, or if they have a laptop that doesn't have an Ethernet port, this is not going to be something they'll be able to do. And it is a little inconvenient. But that's okay. There will be future videos coming out where we'll talk about being able to use Raspberry Pi or... We'll save that for later. So, but yeah, so there you go. PS4 exploit. You can finally install your game backups, launch homebrew games, homebrew programs. Pretty cool. So, um, thanks for sticking around. It's, I know this video is kind of a mess and it's been a long while since I've recorded any kind of a video for you guys, especially any kind of a tutorial of any sorts. Maybe I might just recreate this whole tutorial and upload it again later. I don't know, but 
If you're interested in seeing the Raspberry Pi video, along with my other videos that I do have planned, more PS or PlayStation video, four videos, uh, a new PS3 Hen series, which we'll be doing as well, um, some Raspberry Pi videos, all kinds of stuff, as well as some DOS simulation. We'll, we'll, get, we'll talk more about that later, but thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's been a while, and I hope to have all this content coming back to you guys a lot more on the regular. So if you enjoyed this video, find it useful or crazy, whatever the case would be, let me know in the comment section below. And if you haven't already done so, be sure and click that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you can be part of that notification squad so you won't miss any of my videos that I have coming out soon. So, uh, and as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.